I just came across this case and I selected it to be a good one to use to demonstrate some of my ClinCheck modification techniques, trying to keep things simple. This is a very common type of presentation. It happens to be ortho relapse. Patient is uh, 21, had prior treatment. You see there's some narrowing of the buccal segments and we've got lower crowding and we've got upper crowding. And if you look, you can see the lower crowding is definitely more than the upper. That already directs me to the possibility of there being a bolt in discrepancy. And here you could see very wide upper centrals and narrow laterals and very wide lower laterals. So we have to keep that in mind. There's gonna to have to be lower IPR or some upper space left. And there probably wasn't at the end of the braces treatment. And that could be one of the reasons why it was prone to uh, relapse. So uh, first thing I notice is arch expansion. Invisalign is amazing. Uh, at expanding the dental arch. It's not a skeletal expansion, and that will give us room to line up the teeth. But the modification I make quite often, the molars are in a perfect occlusion. And even though the arch has that little bit of constriction, it usually is more in the premolar region. You can see this more pronounced as patients get older. Uh, sometimes I call it an omega-shaped arch. And so what I will do is the first modification I will make, let me take the attachments off for now, uh, I make the molars not move. Now, when you do this, if the premolars were expanding, you'll probably see a little asymmetry where the primo second premolars will be out maybe two buckle. So then I will moderate that and bring that in a little bit like so. And I'll bring this in a little bit like so. I'll do the same on the bottom. Don't, I am not worried that lower left seven is rotated like that. It's fully erupted. And you start trying to rotate a difficult tooth like this when there's really not a major clear reason. You can lead to unwanted iatrogenic intrusion of molars. And I bet there's a correlation between posterior open bites and the degree and complexity of movement of posterior teeth. Okay, so now the default ClinCheck has um, some space distal to the laterals. Now I will explain to the patient well, we have to do IPR or we have to leave that space. Now, some patients like a the fullest upper smile and they will be okay having bonding after the treatment. Um, alternatively, let's look at the lower anterior. Now, here's a change that I will make quite often. Look at that lateral incisor and look at the amount of distal root torque. Now, if you're going by the incisal edge, that degree of root torque is necessary, but I'm going to lessen that a little bit. And I don't care, this is a worn tooth. So I don't care if the incisal edge is a little sloped, at least in my first ClinCheck, because I'm gonna try to not use too many attachments. So I'd rather rotate that tooth a little bit more around its axis. So I'm looking for that uh, on any other teeth. Uh, here you can actually see the incisal edge looks worse. I'll bring this. I'm just trying not to make the roots move distal or mesial. All right, this will be a great place to do IPR because that's a very large dark triangle. And if you can use a single-sided disc, you know that this was a wider tooth than this. So I'll try to focus on that right there. Uh, I'll maybe do a little bit in here. I put 0.5 there because 0.5 usually is, is a lot of uh, IPR and tough to do, but this will be very accessible once these teeth line up. Uh, and then in my first ClinCheck, I probably will leave this space. And if the patient doesn't like it, I can do more lower IPR. Um, and then I can close that space even further. But notice how the molars haven't moved. I'm expanding the arches. And uh, I'm also going to look for any extrusions. I don't want extrusions. I'm going to take that extrusion away. Let's look at the lower. There's some intrusion. That's okay. All right. I think this case is ready to go. Let's do live update. And this will probably be about, be about 18 aligners, maybe 15 aligners. If you bear with me, if you stay to the end of the video, we'll see how many aligners we need for this. 
it will move pretty quick in the next 10 seconds, having done so many of these. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Please go faster. There we go. I thought I saw the lower move. All right, this is dead time. But, oh, there we go. 18 aligners, just like I uh, thought. I said 15 to 18, and that's not my default protocol. Um, the attachments, guess what? We don't need one of these attachments. I'm going to remove all the attachments. Uh, I'll click a button after I leave here. Attachments are overrated if you're not doing difficult movements.